Hey everybody, it's Ripley. I'm back again. We're in section 7.4. I'm going to talk about sum and difference identities. These are super fun. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna write the the ones out for sine and cos, and then I'll prove the ones for cosine, and I'll also show you how the one for tangent is uh, done as well. So just what's going to happen here is we need a way to start adding angles. Okay, so if I'm going to do the cosine of the sum of two angles, all right, which I'm going to call alpha and beta, just like always, right? Then there's there's a formula, and that formula is real simple. It's just cosine alpha, cosine beta. I'll show you why we need these down the road, but you'll see in just a sec. Um, minus sine alpha, sine beta. All right. If I'm going to do cosine of alpha minus beta, then this is going to be cos alpha, cos beta, plus sine alpha, whoops, sine alpha sine beta. Now if I want to do sine of alpha plus beta, this one's a little bit different. This one is sine alpha cos beta plus sine beta cos alpha. And then if I want to do the difference, so sine of alpha minus beta, then this guy turns into sine, whoops, sine of alpha cos beta and minus sine beta cos alpha. Okay, so there's not a whole lot to it. Um, again, I'm gonna, I actually want to prove this one to you. I want to prove this guy to you, and then the rest of them pretty much fall out. It's, it's basically a variation on exactly the same thing. All right, now check this out. I'm gonna draw two circles, probably very, very badly. Oh, ooh, that one wasn't bad, huh? And then this guy right here. This is a this is a very clever proof because you got to realize that these guys didn't have calculators, they didn't have computers. All that they had were their wits, basically. Okay, and watch watch what they did. It was so clever because they were finding like if I want to figure out what the sine of pi eights is, that's that's going to be tricky. Like keep keep your eye on the prize, so to speak. Let's say that I want to figure out what the cosine of uh, five pi twelfths is or the sine of pi eighths is. Now remember, our freebies are what? Zero, multiples of pi six, multiples of pi fourths, multiples of pi thirds, and then multiples of pi halves, which is really kind of multiples of zero, but we don't want to talk about that. So anything like twelfths or eighths or anything like that, especially initially, they're like, we can't do it, we're screwed. So watch what I'm going to do here. I doubt that they actually said that. I'm going to I'm going to come out um, let's go I'm going to I'm going to call this angle right here. I'm going to call this beta. So if that's beta, we've got a free piece of information. I know that this point on the unit circle, of course, these are both unit circles. I'm not going to write it up because by now hopefully we've got that. We know that this point can be defined as cos beta and sine beta, right? Cuz cos is always x and sine is always y. And then I'm going to grab another point here. Let's call this, I'm going to call this big guy right here, I'm going to call that alpha. All right, so this is cos alpha and sine alpha, right? Again, cos is always x, sine is always y, and we're happy. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things here. First things first, this distance right here is going to be what? It's going to be the size of this angle minus the size of this angle, so it's going to be alpha minus beta, right? But now that's the angular distance. Think of that as angular distance. But what I'm really interested in is the distance from this point whoops, to this point, right? I'm going to draw this right through the middle of my alpha minus beta. Sorry, it's that distance that I'm interested in. Now, this is going to be a little tricky for you to visualize. But what I'm going to do is I'm notice if I take this angle, alpha minus beta, I can, I can do what's called an isomorphism, or I can rotate this thing around and still preserve the measure of the angle. So I'm going to drag this point right here. Let me change the colors one more time. I'm going to drag this point right here, and I'm going to, dang it, sorry, and I'm going to rotate it down until it's at 1, comma 0. So notice, what ends up happening is I end up with that point translating to that point, all right? And then it appears, again, this is a badly drawn deal, but it appears that if I rotate this point down to here, then this point's going to rotate to about there, to about there. 
All right. Now, what does that mean? Why is that helpful? Well, look at this. I know that I've, this angle is preserved. It didn't change. So the measure of this angle from here to here is alpha minus beta, right? Now we know since we re rotated this guy down here, it's one comma zero, no brainer. And I know that since this angle measure is alpha minus beta, then this is going to have cosine of alpha minus beta. That's gonna be the name of this point, comma sine of alpha minus beta. Now you may say, We're, okay, Ripley, why did we do that? I, okay, I get it. We just rotated this angle around so that this now becomes an initial point, right, on the x-axis, and then, you know, we just preserve the size of the angle. But what we're going to do, more importantly than preserving the size of the angle, we preserve the distance. The distance from here to here is exactly the same as the distance from here to here. Okay? Now, just bear with me for just a sec. Watch what happens. If those distances are preserved, then I can use very simple coordinate geometry to find their distances. All right? So I'm going to say the distance on the left. It's going to be the left distance right here, right? Now, let's see if we remember this. Well, it's, uh, it's the square root of cos alpha minus cos beta, right? Squared, true? plus uh, what, sine alpha, sine alpha minus sine beta squared, right? It's just the differences in the x's squared plus the differences in the y squared, which is just a fancy way of saying the Pythagorean theorem. All right, now I'm gonna run out of room, but let's change, let's change colors here, all right? And I'm gonna say the distance on the right is equal to, okay, now this one's a little trickier. Let's say I got cos alpha, cos alpha minus beta, minus 1, right, just the differences in the x's, squared, true, and then plus sine alpha minus beta minus 0 squared, and then of course, since it's the Pythagorean theorem that we're using for distance, we just take the square of that, okay? Now, I'm going to bring this proof over here. I'm going to change color of my pen and I'll finish the, the um, I'll finish the proof over here. Okay, so watch what happens. First thing I'm going to do, intuitively speaking, is I'm going to get rid of the square roots. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to incorporate two algebraic tricks at once. Okay, now watch what happens here. Uh, when I take cos alpha minus cos beta and I square it, I get. Now remember, my square roots have disappeared. I think we can all acknowledge that that's a viable trick. I'm going to end up with cos squared alpha minus two cos alpha cos beta right, plus cos squared beta, that's this term, plus sine squared alpha minus 2 sine, where are we, 2 sine alpha sine beta, there's a lot of stuff going on, so you got to be a little bit careful, right, plus sine squared beta. Now, I'm going to deal with this first. Just let me deal with the left-hand side first because I can make this a heck of a lot easier on myself if, if I deal with this first. Cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is 1. Cos squared beta plus sine squared beta is 1, right? Now, look at what we got here. We got minus 2 cos alpha cos beta and minus 2 sine alpha sine beta, right? You see what I got here? So let's see, cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is 1, plus another one is 2. So I end up with 2 minus 2 cos alpha cos beta minus 2, this is an equals, by the way, minus 2 sine alpha sine beta, right? Now that's the left-hand side. That's, the, that's this guy. Now I'm going to deal with this guy. I'm going to set this equal to... The left-hand side, remember we got rid of the square root simply by squaring everything. Now let's look close. I end up with cosine squared of alpha minus beta, right, minus 2 cos alpha minus beta, right, plus 1. That's for this chunk right here, right? Now this is going to be, sorry about my board work or my tablet work right here, plus sine squared alpha 
minus beta, right? Because if I square this, remember, sine alpha minus beta minus zero is just sine of alpha minus beta. When I square it, I get sine squared alpha minus beta. Now, look at my trip. What I have is I end up with 2 minus 2 cos alpha cos beta minus 2 sine alpha sine beta. Now, look at this. Sine squared plus cos squared is 1. Well, 1 plus this extra 1 that we picked up from squaring this term is 2. So I can set that equal to 2 minus 2 cos alpha minus beta. Look how clever this trick is. Remember, my bottom line is, I told you guys, I'm at the end of the day, I want to prove what cosine of alpha minus beta is. And there's one sitting right there. Now, granted, it's got a 2 in front of it, but I'm not afraid. Watch what happens. 2's disappear. All of these have negative 2's. So if I, I divide everything through by negative 2's, I end up with the cosine of alpha minus beta, divide through by negative 2, divide through by negative 2, divide through by negative 2, and look at what I get. I end up with cos alpha cos beta plus sine alpha sine beta. And look at that, just like I said. Now, I can prove all of these in a similar fashion. I'm not going to drag you through the drudgery of that. The point is that I want you to see, all right, I'm not just proving this to say, oh, look at this, we could prove whatever we want. I want you to see how clever these guys were. It was so important that they had these pieces of information that they had to use whatever tools that they had. And in this case, they had logic and just smart little moves. You know what I mean? I just I love what they do. I think it's just awesome. All right. So that's the proof of those.